topic of the message this morning is the Enneagram. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means uh, I can trust it. Why? Because it's not given by man, it's given by God. And we see and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly really furnished unto all good works. You might need a mechanic to fix your car. You might need a plumber to fix your, your plumbing issues. You might need a roofer to fix your roof. You don't need the Enneagram to fix your heart and your relationship problems. You need the word of God. And we can see that principle right there. The word of God is sufficient. Uh, that means the Bible's the soul authority. You hear sola scriptura, and then you hear prima scriptura. Sola scriptura, it's a fancy theological term that means the Bible, the scripture is sufficient. Prima scriptura is what the Roman Catholics believe. The Bible, yeah, it's authoritative. It's the primary, prima, primary, but it's not the only source. The Enneagram is infiltrating what are supposed to be Christian churches. And their members and their people are getting away from sola scriptura and they're getting into prima scriptura. Uh, what is the Enneagram? It's two Greek words, anea that means nine and gramma that means something drawn. In other words, a drawing or a figure. The Enneagram means the drawing of nine. It's a circle with a nine-pointed figure that is drawn within or inside that circle. All the connecting lines are evenly spaced out. Basically, there's, there's a triangle in there and then uh, an irregular hexagon. The drawing of nine diagram is organized around different personality types. The Enneagram is an occultic thing that is a form of gaining knowledge. And it illustrates how different personality types would relate to one another. Basically, including nine ways of seeing the world and nine ways of experiencing the world. Does anybody want to guess what one of the primary ways of the occult that the occult uses to communicate? Now, it's not the only way. But the primary way that they communicate is through symbols, diagrams, drawings. That should be a tip off. That doesn't mean we th throw away all symbols. You see a cross that doesn't. OK, what I'm saying is that is a primary way that Satanists and occultists use to communicate. Not through using words, but through using <laughs> diagrams and symbolism. This enneagram is not of God. It's a form of personality testing, and each trait of your personality is assigned a number. Number one, reformer. Two, helper. Three, achiever. Four, individualist. Five, investigator. Six, loyalist. Seven, enthusiast. Eight, challenger. Nine, peacemaker. So you're supposed to be able to help better understand yourself by having a, a neogram expert give you a number and that will help you be a better you and it will help you fix all of your relationship problems. But it's not just a personality test that's supposed to give individual personality traits. It shows nine ways that people get lost, which corresponds, by the way, with the nine ways that you can find your true self. This is supposed to be the way the Enneagram is supposed to be the way where you can find your way back to God. Have you ever heard of something as ludicrous as the Enneagram helping you to find yourself and your way back to God? Anybody remember the Bible? <laughs> Psalm 32. Look at verse 7.
Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. Think about that. What does that mean? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Israel's always been a stiff-necked people. They always have. But this truth can be applied to all. You know why on a horse, a horse and a mule, they have an excuse. Because they don't have any understanding. That's why we use bits and bridles and we got to tack the horse up. And we're not a horse or a mule. We've got God as our hiding place. He's going to instruct us and teach us. We don't need outside sources. This enneagram is a satanic doorway to help Christians enter into this realm of self-help on satanic steroids is what it is. You don't need it. No church needs it. Shouldn't be in the church. The Bible is enough to reveal why you think, why you act, and why you feel. You don't need the Enneagram. Sanctify them through truth. Where do you find truth? By word is truth. I'm going to give you some names so that you know these names. Uh, Suzanne Stable and her husband, Reverend Joseph Stable. The Bible says in 111, holy and reverend is his name. Uh, that word reverend is reserved for God. But nonetheless, he refers to himself as the reverend. Uh, they are United Methodist pastors. And they operate. The Life and Trinity Ministry in Dallas, Texas. Their goal is to teach you how to parent, how to meditate, how to pray, and how to have better relationships. Well, that'd be great if they used the Bible, except they use workshops, and they've done over 500 of them, teaching people, Christians, Christian people going to this, how to learn how to use the Enneagram. Their most popular Enneagram course is called Know Your Number. You can't get help in this world until you know your number. They have a book titled Journey Through Wholeness, Enneagram Wisdom for Stress, Balance, and Transformation. They uh, It's an appealing title. The Road Back to You. I don't want the road back to me. <laughs> Give me the road away from me and to God. <laughs> I don't want to go back to where I was. I don't need any road back to me. Good night. It's an, it's an Enneagram journey to self-discovery. Self's the problem. I want to build my child's self-esteem. I don't. That's the little sinner's problem. He thinks too highly of himself. It's my toy. It's my, it's my, it's my. No, it isn't. It's God's. Self-discovery. You want self-discovery? Read Romans 1 and read Romans 2. <laughs> You'll discover real quick who you are, an enemy against a holy God. But it was co-authored with Ian Crone. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. If you have sheep, you can appreciate this more. They can't figure out how to get in the gate. The stupid gate's right there. It's been opened. It can't be opened any wider, and you can't figure out how to get in. And you got to gently guide that sheep because if you go too hard, you press too, they're just going to get stressed out. They're going to be all over the place. Why? They're dumb. Not like a dog. And we are like sheep. We've just gone astray. We don't need the Enneagram to get back to you or me. We need we need God's word to get back to God. But anyway, that book, Road Back to You, authored by Ian Crone, He's a psychotherapist. That should give you a hint. Then he's an Episcopalian priest that lives in, guess where? Nashville, Tennessee, right in our home state. This stuff hits the South as quickly as it hits the East Coast and the West Coast. The book is titled that he wrote another book called The Story of You. 
He runs a typology podcast where he discusses human transformation through the lens of the Enneagram. I'm all for more Bible study. You want to have a Bible study? Great. Do it. You want to have a prayer meeting? Great. Do it. You want to get together and go evangelize the lost on your own? Great. Go do it. Somebody invites you to an an Enneagram study so you can become a better you? Run. Run. Hey, come on over. We're going to have an Enneagram workshop. How about I don't come on over, but you come to church and Get some help from the word of God. The scriptures are sufficient. Well, Ian Crone, he boasts of the most accurate and in-depth Enneagram test available. He calls it the IEQ-9 assessment report. Now, that sounds very scientific, like it'll work, but it's a bunch of hogwash. It's designed to give you a deeper level of self-knowledge. So you need to watch out. Suzanne Stable and Joseph Stable, uh, they they are very popular in this industry. Ian Crone is very popular. Uh, a dangerous man. He's considered by some the father of the Enneagram, at least the modern day Enneagram, is Richard Rohr. He's a universalist. All people will attain their own status as a Christ. And they call it Christ consciousness. He believes in pantheism, which is reality is just divine. All things can means all. So all things are gods and goddesses. So you can go out and, you know, talk to the grass and you're talking to God. That's his belief. That is so far from scripture that that man should retire, get on his knees and repent before God and find himself the best Bible believing church he can in his town. He is an absolute Satanist because he doesn't believe the word of God. And he's trying to deceive and he has been successful in deceiving many. He doesn't believe in the Trinity, which is complete heresy. You can't be a Christian and not believe in the Trinity. His book, The Enneagram, A Christian perspective is by worldly means a bestseller. He has been, he's appeared on the Dr. Oz show and he's appeared on the Oprah show and that should be a tip off as well. Bad news. Mark them, which calls divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Have I taught you the Trinity? Did another preacher teach you the Trinity? Have you been taught the Trinity by your mommy and your daddy growing up? Did your preacher growing up teach you the Trinity, senior saints? I'm telling you, this is occultism. And it's being taglined as Christian. It is not Christian. Chris Hertz is an Enneagram coach. He's popular because he was trained by the Enneagram master, who we're supposed to call Father Richard Rohr. He was also mentored by Mother Teresa for three years in India. He wrote a book called The Sacred Enneagram and The Enneagram of Belonging, A Journey to Self-Acceptance. It sounds so snuggly that you just want to brew yourself a nice hot cup of coffee and snuggle up with a blanket and discover yourself. Aren't we supposed to get to know God more? Aren't we supposed to fall in love with God and stop falling in love with ourselves every day? Former pastors. Hunter Mobley is a former pastor. He has a book entitled Enneagram Daily Reflections. He's out of Christ Church in Nashville. He believes that the Enneagram, not the Bible. You need the Bible, but you need the Enneagram as well. Helps us discern both our brokenness and our path toward healing. Go to Acts chapter 9. And I'm going to say something that many will find radical. But 
the church in the book of Acts didn't. This Enneagram problem is deeper than false doctrine in books written by authors. It's deeper than just the authors, and here's why. We have so-called Christian publishing companies that are printing and marketing and selling these books. So I have news for all these so-called Christian publishing houses that are printing and marketing these books. When you start marketing books that are from a cult origin, you cease to be a Christian publishing house and you become a satanic publishing house. It's a deep problem. Acts chapter number 19, verse number 18. You're going to have some folks that come to belief. Verse number 18 in Acts 19. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burn them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. If you're a professing Christian and you're listening online, or you're sitting here and you have some Enneagram books, I would recommend doing what they did in Acts chapter 19. Burning them! In front of all to see. That'd be a good Facebook Live. Put it on the the TikTok, a nice short on YouTube. Burn them. We don't need occultism and satanic books coming into the church house and acting like it's Christian. Like a Christian book publishing house acts like it's not satanic when they publish it. It is. You know what happened after they burned the books? Look at verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. A church will not grow when it starts bringing in occultism. It will grow in numbers. But it will not grow in spiritual numbers. It will grow by waxing worse and worse. And we will have more problems than we ever imagined. Because nobody comes out unscathed with the neograms and Ouija boards and all that kind of stuff. Nobody comes out unscathed. We had some folks that tell some stories of their childhood. They, they read these things and they these things. And so their nights sleeping were always restless because, as an adult, because of what they were into. For a decade growing up as a young adult, a young child. Unfortunately, not only former pastors, not only book authors, not only Christian so-called publishing houses, but also pastors are using this for sermon series, for discipling, and God help us for marriage counseling. Please, kindly and respectfully pull me aside and come to me and ask me to step down from the pulpit and retire. If I ever say to a young couple, why don't you sit down? I'll help you how to fix your marriage by using the Enneagram. Help me to retire if I ever think like that. Kindly show me the door, the Enneagram. Some of you senior saints can't believe how bad it's got. But it's infiltrated the church. You can go right downtown, the First United Methodist Church right in Cookville. You can take a, uh, a transformative discipleship and you can read The Road Back to You and Understanding the Enneagram by Suzanne Stable. It's right. It, it, you can sign up for the course. <laughs> You're laughing. You can do it right here in town. Christian wisdom. You want to gain Christian wisdom in their category on how to gain, gain Christian wisdom. It's not read the Bible. It's not read the book of Proverbs. It's read Richard Rohr's books. The father of the, the Enneagram. You don't believe me? Check it out for yourself. Life Church. You can go right down the street. Thousands of people will be there. Thousands of people 
But last July, their Facebook post was this. Last week, we spoke about the strengths of each Enneagram number. So this week, we will discuss the weaknesses of each Enneagram number. Sorry, I'm not going, and I'm not recommending anybody to go. And as soon as a Christian church starts embracing the occult, they cease to be Christian. It is not a Christian church when you embrace satanic occultism. It's not. You want to use a different Bible? Fine. You want to think about end times different? Fine. You want to not have holy living standards? Fine. You want to start bringing in occultism? That's not fine. We can disagree on all those things. I know many a good preachers that preach out of the ESV. They preach the gospel. They witness to the lost. They try to win souls. I know many post-trippers that love the lost. And we have a disagreement of three and a half years when it comes to eschatology. Fine. Fine. We'll agree to disagree. I talked to a preacher last month or two months ago. He thinks drinking in moderation is okay. He still witnesses to the lost. He still has got the gospel right down the line. Fine. I highly disagree with that man. I will never preach that from the pulpit here. But you know what? He loves souls. He's trying to win souls. He hasn't denied the Trinity. He hasn't bring. He has not brought in occultism into his church. You start playing around with the Enneagram and the Ouija boards and all this witch stuff. Game on. All bets are off. And you have an authority from the word of God to call that out. It should not. I'm telling you, if it enters into this church, (laughs) the threat, the spiritual threat will be eliminated immediately. Okay. If it enters into the Sunday school. Sweet Miss Chrissy will kindly escort that person in that book out of the Sunday school. We're not teaching our kids occultism. It's not coming into this church. It shouldn't be in any Christian church. Jude 15 is an interesting verse. To execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly. Among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. Of all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. It's a great passage to go through. It's just un- everything's ungodly. And everything about the Enneagram is ungodly. Don't get involved with it. Baylor University, it's hit colleges. They offer a certificate. At Baylor Spiritual Life, they have on their website, it says, we use the Enneagram as a spiritual tool. How about the Bible? You're a Christian school. As a spiritual tool to help us be more aware of how we react and respond to others and how we can begin to transform ourselves into people who react and respond more like Christ. You would think that these college professors have been strung out on crack cocaine for the last two decades to come up with something as stupid as this. You're a Christian university. Is this too early for this kind of stuff? I, it's, look, what happened to the Bible, Kelly? What happened to the Bible? Right now, you can drive an hour. You can find a half a dozen of churches using the Enneagram. You can come right in our town. You can find two, two churches recommending and use, using the Enneagram. Baylor University says it's a tool to be the best the best version of who God is creating you to be. Millions of Christians are involved. Go to Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter number 4. Verse number 12, if you think I'm being too hard on these, this Enneagram crowd, for the word of God is quick, verse 12, and powerful and sharper than any Enneagram. 
<laughs> than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Enneagram is in direct contrast to the word of God. You do not need it to help your marriage. You do not need it to help your children. You do not need it to help you find the path back to you. You need the word of God. And this modern Laodicean church has it completely and utterly wrong. It's always the scripture over here, but we have these other tools that can kind of help. They say they try to douse it in theological terms, but they're saying the word of God is not quick and powerful enough. There are only two, two, two types of people, those that are in Adam or in Christ. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth where? In me! You've got Christ, the Holy Spirit in you. And if you're not living a victorious Christian life, and you say you have Christ, you better do some serious Bible study and figure out what the problem is. You're either not saved or you're saved and you're so confused because your brain's getting drawn in all these other places with the neograms and all the stuff. Faith which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I didn't have some satanic occultist die for me. I'm going to write a book to help me out. Be a reformer. They need to reform their view and repent and trust the Savior. The Bible is our final authority. The Enneagram is the extreme example of the danger of modern versions. Let me qualify that. I don't believe a man that preaches out of the New King James or the ESV or the NIV. I don't think he's an occultic. Now, we might get into some origin and history of some stuff that uh, historically has backed some of those versions. But I know plenty of men who love the Lord. They just, they just don't believe that God's promise that he preserved his word. So they're into scholarship. Okay, fine. But you got to admit, as soon as you change your presupposition from, I've got a spiritual book that I believe God preserved, and I can read it, believe it, obey it, I don't have to change, alter it, or correct it at all. The minute you move away from believing by faith God's promise, you can get yourself into a whole host of things. And the Enneagram is one of them. It's an extreme example of, well, we don't really have the word of God. Yeah, be careful. Second Peter 1. Second Peter 1, verse number 19. The Bible says we have a more Sure word of prophecy, wherein do you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in the dark place till the day dawn, dark star arises in your heart. If you're a Roman Catholic, you're going to wait for the Pope to speak from the bench and give you some authority from the Word of God. They'll say they believe the Bible. But the Pope speaking ex cathedra is just as authoritative as the word of God. That's a farce. You talk to one of these bicycle boys, you know, they're 19 years old and they're an elder. <laughs> uh, they're going to, you know, they're going to they're knock on your door. They're going to be polite. They're going to be very courteous. And you're going to say, well, we believe the, the Bible. And they're going to say, yeah, we do too. But you need the Book of Mormon. You need the Doctrines and Covenants. You need the Pearl of Great Price. You need a, a neogram number. I don't need an neogram number, and you don't need an neogram number either. I know what my weaknesses are. I'm married. <laughs> you fellas, you don't have to be married for too long to find out your wife's going to tell you what your weaknesses are. You got kids? I know what my weaknesses are. 
I flew off the handle last week. I did this right. Then they grow up and get older. They can point out all your weaknesses. You can't get away. Try pastoring a church. You'll find out every week you've got weaknesses. <laughs> I didn't like that message. Well, you preach four messages a week. <laughs> Why do we need the Enneagram to find out our weaknesses? Get in a relationship. Go ahead and keep a job for any amount of time. You'll find out real quick you have weaknesses. Go play a sport and you'll find out real quick. The coach will point out all your weaknesses. We have scripture to correct us. We have spouses that are supposed to be Christians to correct us. We have our kids to correct. I mean, we don't need the Enneagram. It's absolutely from the occult. and Your family doesn't need the Enneagram either. You need more Bible teaching, more Bible preaching, more prayer, more evangelism, more Christian fellowship, more Christian friends, more Christian, good, godly, conservative Christian music. That's what you need. That's what you need. More family devotions. That's what you need. Things start, start getting off at my house. I got to ask myself, how's my prayer life been? How's the family devotion been? I'm not running to the United Methodist outfit to get an Enneagram book. I'm not doing it. You don't need it. You don't need it. Bible says in Titus chapter one, holding fast faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to give offense to the gainsayers. You want to convince somebody that's hooked on the Enneagram, you're going to have to convince them the word of God is sufficient. Until they move from that presupposition, it's going to keep infecting churches. You know, you can build a bigger church, but building big things isn't hard. I've done them. I've built big things. I've built successful companies. It's not hard. It's work. <laughs> the principles aren't hard. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of commitment, but it ain't hard. You know what's hard? Convincing people that the word of God is sufficient. If they would just fall in love with the author of this book instead of the author of other books, their life would be so much easier and better. I read books. That's all I do all week is read books. But I filter every book through the Bible. I got a library full of books. I got books all over my house. I got books open and bookmarked that I don't even know where they are. And I get to them. Oh, yeah, I remember I was reading that. I read books. But this is the book. This is the spiritual book. I read modern versions. Read them every week. I prepare sermons. I want to see what they say. Well, got to find out what the other side's up to. Matt Brown in Sandals Church. He's uh, basically runs franchised religion. He has thirteen campuses. They got to call them campuses because they're not they're not churches, especially when they bring in occultism. Uh, but Matt says that his place. It's a place to get real. Well, they're not being real. He does not believe the Bible is enough. He firmly believes that the Enneagram helps us. He's out in California, by the way. I don't know if you've heard of him, Brother Eric. He says, his quote is, he's not found a better tool to help people be honest with themselves. Matt, what about the Bible? They all say, well, we're not against the Bible, but they just have to have the Enneagram. He says the Enneagram gives people an opportunity to talk about envy. How about Proverbs 14? A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Does the Bible explain that? Sister, you imagine Adrian Rogers bringing that in in, in your heyday. You imagine him bringing that in this church? Yeah. He says it gives people an opportunity to talk about pride. Proverbs 8, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy are the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. How do you help your child get over pride? How do you help your spouse or yourself or your. You can go to the book of Proverbs and you can learn what the Bible says and apply it. Selfishness. 
You want to help? You need help with selfishness? Philippians 2. Let nothing be, de- be, be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowness of mind, gain self-esteem. That's not what Philippians 2 says. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. I used to teach when I started my martial arts school. I was 23 years old. So I thought I knew everything. But I really didn't know anything. And so I bought into this idea is we're going to teach we're going to teach parents uh, their kids. We're going to teach them self-esteem. And th- this is a real big thing in, in, the, in the 90s. All the pipes out colleges would get your kids to build this self-esteem. Well, after I got saved, when people would call and they want to set up their sample, their, you know, their free lesson sample class. Sometimes the questions would be, well, well, what makes your school different? Why should I come to your school? And I'd say, well, we're the only school in town that doesn't teach self-esteem. And you can imagine the reaction. Well, wait, what do you mean? I thought it's supposed to help with self-esteem. Now, self-esteem is the problem. We will help your child to esteem others better than themselves. This is why Johnny doesn't let Susie play with his truck. This is why Susie throws the truck at Johnny when she wants to play with it. It's all selfishness. It's all they've esteemed themselves so high. The Bible can help us with that. Go to Philippians 2. Matt Brown is highly offended if a preacher like myself says that we should be against the Enneagram. Matt cannot understand why people would be against other people getting help. You're legalist, you're angry, you're hateful. That's because he believes the lie that God helps those who help themselves. No, he doesn't. God helps those who can't help themselves. When it was pointed out to Matt by some other preachers of the word of God, saying that the Enneagram is a satanic cult, which it is, his response is, well, the church can be cultic too. Matt, have you been smoking marijuana for the last three weeks? The church is the pillar and ground of truth. Jesus Christ himself said, I will build my my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How can you say that? It's completely anti-biblical. He goes on to say that the Holy Spirit will use the Enneagram. Don't look inward. This thing isn't about you. You need to look up. It's all about God. Look toward Christ. He's the only source of truth. We'll finish with a few things. You still uh, go back to Hebrews If you would, we'll finish here in Hebrews chapter number two. And we'll wrap up. The Holy Spirit is holy. Therefore, the Holy Spirit would not use something that is unholy. And the Enneagram is 100% unholy. Hebrews 12. Verse number two, you want to look unto some something, look unto Jesus. Verse two, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The church grew in the book of Acts because it burned their satanic occult books. All the books on the curious arts. Paul didn't have one of them on any of his missionary journeys. All of the great revivals that happened through America. You know what the preachers had under their armpit? The King James Bible. They didn't have the Enneagram. We don't need it. I don't want it. It is satanic. And it will never enter the doors of this church as long as I'm the pastor. Just mark it down. You will have to drag me out. We bring any curious arts in here. So if you heard of the Enneagram, you'd be concerned. That's okay. You don't have to be concerned. It won't come in here. Uh, If anybody wants to call me legalistic and angry and hateful, I would just say I've been called worse names. And the Bible says, therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. Yea, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way that's what psalm says i love everything above and i am told to hate every false way 
So there, you can tell everybody you have a hateful preacher. And well, you say, why is he hateful? Because he hates every false way. And I want to encourage you to as well. And you can do it with a smile on your face. No, it's wrong. I just hate it. I hate every false way. 